Hey guys, it's me, Meteor, and welcome to another edition of What is Kirby Cannon? This time we'll be talking about the artists. Not including Paint Roller, who has less character depth than a blimp, the first real artist introduced to us was Addo in Dreamland 3, or Adeline, if you will. There was a time it was debated whether they were separate characters or not, but those days are all but forgotten. This was thanks to the 20th anniversary encyclopedia, while we'll never outright confirming it, it mentions both Addo and Adeline are female, and that Addo may just be a nickname for Adeline. Understandable, since their Japanese name is Adorino, which was way too long to display as a boss name in Dreamland 3. On top of that, recently in Star Allies, one of Adeline's attacks is named Addo's Painter. If that doesn't confirm it, I'm not sure what will. However, just in case there's any more doubt, Teo EXE did his own research on the matter, which I will post in the description, involving interviews around the original release of Kirby 64. Enough about that though, let's talk about Adeline herself. Honestly, not much is really known about Adeline, except for one excerpt from the Kirby 64 instruction manual, which says she came to Popstar to study art, before, you know, getting controlled by Dark Matter TWICE. That first part's interesting though. It doesn't say she came to Dreamland, it says she came to Popstar. That means this place is not her home planet and explains why she's the only human there. Where then is her original planet? That's not confirmed, although there could be one place. In Kirby 64, we see a place with modern skyscrapers, factories, and overrun by a giant robot. Shiver Star, a planet that looks almost identical to our Earth and Moon in a nuclear winter. If this is where Adeline originated, one can only imagine what was on her mind having to go back. Though later, she may have something else running through her mind. Cue Drasha. Drasha is quite the mysterious villain, a simple painting brought to life with the intention of turning everything else into its likeness. The origins of this painting remained a mystery until Triple Deluxe, with the appearance of Paintra. In her description, it states she originated from a painting of two sisters separated at birth. If it is referring to Drasha, one must wonder how close the two really were after the separation. The DX form is even more interesting, saying she was born from a forgotten painting made by a mysterious brush, and that one must wonder if the painter who created her regrets giving her form. It's never confirmed who the mysterious painter is, but up to this point, there were only two that could even bring paintings to life. Paint Roller, who once again has absolutely no character development, and Adeline. Some claim it could also be the magical paintbrush from Canvas Curse itself, since it was sentient. But then why would the description show painter in red text, but not a mysterious brush? It's clear the focus is on the painter itself. If this painter was Adeline, it's possible she could have even painted them while under Dark Matter's control, which would explain why Josh's attacks are so similar to Void's. Regardless of that, there is one other sister that makes her appearance in Star Allies, Vividria. Her guest star description states she wants to do her best so that she doesn't lose to her sisters. Once again, it doesn't state who those sisters are, but if we look at this page from the Star Allies soundtrack's art book, Along with what seems to be concept art of Vividria, we can see sketches of Drasha and Paintra with the words Big Sister written underneath each one. Considering the original painting was of two sisters separated at birth, where this third one came from is anyone's guess. Maybe the artist decided to redeem themselves and try again. Mission failed if that's the case, but at least this one can be redeemed. On the topic of redeeming artists, let's talk about Rainbow Curse. Despite this similar name and gameplay, this game is not a direct sequel to Canvas Curse, even though it does take place after those events. The only reason we know that is from a figurine of Drasha saying there was once a time she turned Kirby into a ball. Instead, the story involves a girl named Oline who fled into Popstar to find everything was completely wiped of color, including Kirby. Side note, how is it all these spin-off villains seem to be more successful at stopping Kirby than any of the main villains? Eh, whatever. Thankfully, Alliant has the power to bring things to life after coloring it with paint. 
She can't, however, bring things to life that she paints. That's where this game's main villain, Klaisha, comes in. Klaisha and Align used to be great friends. During this time, they brought art to life together. Klaisha would sculpt the objects, and Align would paint them. This was until, as the figurine puts it, Klaisha went a little cuckoo. Throughout the game, we can tell Align was deeply affected by this, even showing some of the stages of grief. We can see anger in this profile, calling Klaisha totally selfish, and that her birthday is probably winter, more than likely referring to her cold heart. On this page, we can see her crying and trying to find a way to fix it, showing bargaining and depression, and finally, accepting the situation and having hope, thanks to Kirby. After knowing this, it makes the scene where Lion tries to talk sense into her before getting smacked harder to watch. Thankfully, after her defeat, Klaisha finally snaps out of it and the two are reunited again. This scene still warms my heart. Of course, Klaisha was never really the villain at all. She was just under the control of the true culprit, Dark Crafter. Despite being able to possess others and having a true dark appearance, it's unknown if he's truly related to dark matter. If he was, it seems odd he would want to steal colors since dark matter is weak to rainbows and light. Then again, perhaps he was just envious of all the colors Dreamland had to enjoy, while he was only able to wallow in darkness. Similar to Dark Matter's original reason for invading Dreamland. I've also seen some claim Dark Crafter is just Seventopia's version of Dark Matter, like Dark Mind is the Mirror Worlds. That's where things get a bit confusing. Like, where did Seventopia even come from? Align's diary claims Klaisha made the Seven Worlds after stealing the colors from Dreamland. Klaisha's figurine says she was taking control of as she was sculpting Seventopia, and Align's figurine says Klaisha and her used to rule this world until she went crazy. So which is it? Maybe there was only one world in Seventopia, Klaisha was sculpting the other six, then after she got possessed and stole the colors, she brought the worlds to life without Align's help. Considering Klaisha, with the power of color, was able to make spiked balls come to life on her own, I guess that makes the most sense. But Dark Crafter being a version of Dark Matter in a world created by Align and Klaisha seems highly unlikely. All that aside, in the end, Dark Crafter is destroyed, everything turns out fine, and the two are able to live happily creating art together again. And with that, we've talked about everything we needed to about the artists. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.